We also learned that the Miata probably won't be good enough for the Banff trip. Right? Mm -mm. No? It will not at all. Don't you want to try it? No. <laughs> Me neither. So for our trip to Banff, which is four hours away from where I live, we chose this car instead. The E92 M3 from BMW. This video will mainly be about my experience with the M3 as a road trip car. So if you wanna check out our video about our two days trip to Banff, then go right over here. First of all, the E92 M3 is surprisingly a spacious car. We fit all of our utensils, food items, and other camping gears for the two-day trip all into the trunk and also to the back seats. And I must say, it's definitely quite, <laughs> it's definitely more spacious than the Miata. It's like a pickup truck compared to the Miata. I think we can easily fit a week's worth of camping gear and food supplies into the back seat and the trunk of the M3. And surprisingly for a car with a naturally aspirated performance V8, it gets pretty decent fuel mileage. During this trip, it got about 10.6 kilometers per liter, which is about that miles per gallon. Definitely respectable for a car with the V8 if you can keep your foot away from the gas pedal, which is pretty hard to do. <laughs> the way there. The biggest discovery on our four hour trip to Banff is that the M3 is a surprisingly a comfortable car to drive on trips like these. The M3's seven speed DCT kept the RPM around 3,500, or not 3,500, 2,700 while going about 110 kilometers per hour, which is about 70 miles per hour. And while it's not the lowest, it's definitely much lower than the Miatas at 3,500. And with the electronic damping control turned to comfort, it was quite forgiving on regular highways. And with the M button pressed, it was quite tight and a lot of fun to drive on twisty roads of the Canadian highways. This is the highway number 1A in the Canadian Rockies. It's not as famous or quick as the main highway, the Highway 1, which makes it more quiet, and a lot more twisties too. So it's a lot of fun to drive with a car like the M3. The twisty roads and the lack of cars definitely reminded me of the toges or mountain roads of Japan. And if you're planning on driving to the Canadian Rockies, definitely take the Highway 1A as much as you can anyways. If you have a car like the M3 or any fun car to drive, then definitely it's worth going to the 1A. Curves. I like this road. Eventually we merged back to the Highway 1 and made it to Banff in just over four hours. And then we realized find parking in the town of Banff during peak season, peak summer season, is a little bit of a difficult thing to do. So we ended up driving around town for about 15 minutes looking for parking. Well, we eventually found parking and then we had a quick meal and came out, headed to our campsite. And after a quick setup at our campsite, we went out and spent the afternoon and the evening having fun and enjoying the town of Banff and its area. And after this, we came back to our campsite and had a quick meal and called it a night. 
So the next day, we left the town of Banff and headed to the Lake Minnewanka area, which is about five minutes away from the town of Banff. And it definitely has some interesting roads to drive the M3. And it also had an abandoned ghost town that used to be a coal mine. But it was quite underwhelming, to be honest. So we went back to Highway 1A, the other side of Highway 1A, and it did not disappoint. Again, with very little cars on the road and twisty roads, making it a fun driving experience. And look at those trees on both sides. It's like a picturesque kind of a road. Definitely visit this road when you come into this area with the car. It's capable of having a little bit of a fun. And eventually we stopped at a uh, quiet creek to explore and have some food. And then reach our destination, Lake Louise, which is quite popular and quite well known among the tourist crowd, so it's quite busy. And there's no parking, they say, but just go keep going up and there will be parking. <laughs> and then we drove up further north to get to Peito Lake, which is a little bit less well known, but just as beautiful. After about an hour of driving up north, we reached the Saskatchewan River Junction. And then we headed to what I think is a, another hidden gem in the Canadian highways, the David Thompson Highway. So there are two main highways that connect two main sites and two major cities in Alberta, Canada. And this David Thompson Highway doesn't lead to any of them, meaning it's quite spacious. No cars on the road. And the road itself is quite interesting. It definitely has some straights where you can open up the throttle and listen to that V8. But it does have some corners like this one here. It's like a blind corner because it's a corner surrounded by a cliff. It's definitely an interesting area to drive around. And a lot of people actually do backcountry camping in this area because it's so beautiful and quiet. And this detour did make our trip back to Edmonton about six hours or so, but enjoyed every bit of it. I would definitely recommend it. We, I always take this road when we go to Jasper or Banff or the Canadian Rockies. After a couple hours, the sun started to set as we came out of the David Thompson Highway. And after a couple more hours, we finally got back to Edmonton with the sun completely down. And that was the end of our trip. So, road trip in an M3. It was it's definitely fun. Take the mountain roads if you can. Quiet mountain roads. And it's definitely the funnest road trip car that you can have. M3's over there. <laughs> so yeah, it's definitely, I would recommend it to anybody who has a GT car. So like a Mustang GT or a Corvette or a Camaro SS or a C63 AMG, you know, all these V8 So yeah, all these V8 GT cars, I recommend it. <laughs> yep, so E92 M3.